Hi everyone and welcome. I'm so happy to see you here and to see some faces that I have known from the past. So it's really wonderful. If you'd like to be on camera, you can take yourself off camera. We're gonna have everybody on mute in the beginning and then you can take yourself off mute at any time to speak with me. And this is gonna be very casual. So you can ask me questions throughout and also you can put information and put uh, questions in the chat as we go along, but you're welcome to take yourself off mute. And right now we have, what is your offer? What are you promoting? So if you pop that into the side, and then what's your biggest PR challenge that you'd like to solve? So number one is getting the media's attention. Number two is not knowing what to say to make your appearance count. And number three is worrying about fumbling, freezing, or looking foolish. So if you would pop your number into the chat, and Natalie, my right-hand gal, is going to be keeping an eye on that and which is just gonna be very interactive. So for those of you who don't know, I'm Susan Harrow, media coach, marketing strategist, martial artist, and also CEO of PRSecrets.com. And my book, Sell Yourself Without Selling Your Soul was published by HarperCollins. And I work with everyone from CEOs to celebrity chefs and really work on everything from their presence to their words. So everything that they do say, are, and think is in complete alignment with whatever they want to promote. So it really has an effect on their business. What you might not know about me is that I am a black belt in Aikido, Japanese martial arts, and I was a former teaching tennis pro, and I was almost sold into slavery for 10 camels and a mule. So what we are going to cover today, podcast to broadcast, how to use media to grow your business. And what we're going to cover is the essential things that you need to know to become a go-to podcast or media guest. So that covers all media. Five templates for your signature story that the media love and connects to your audience. Most of you have the PDF. If not, we're going to pop up the PDF link there so you'll all be able to have it because we're going to work on that together in a bit. And I'm going to take you a tour through the magic pyramid so you'll see exactly how ready you are for media interviews. And then strategies to get your message across in any media interview so you grow your business and influence. And so Q&A throughout, but we're also going to open for Q&A later on. And then I'm going to take you through a special process that could help you make a big shift on the spot. One client said it was like cleaning her spark plugs. So that'll be toward the end. And then you're going to come away with your sloppy first copy of your signature story. And for those of you who are just coming in, you are welcome to Hi, Holly. I just see, nice to see you. We met many years ago. It's great to see people who, who I've actually met in person and know. So it's been forever. It's been forever. It has been forever. I was thinking about that. So this is such a great connecting. So this is sort of a PR event, reaching out to people that I didn't even realize that we had and then reconnecting. So it's a wonderful, sometimes you just have no idea what, what's going to happen with PR. That's part of the beauty. And it's the beauty and the ugliness of it, those two kind of unpredictable things. Um, so have your, your um, PDF handy for when uh, for when we start. I'm also going to be inviting you to go deeper if you choose. And if not, that's fine as well. One of my clients, Victoria Moran, and I were media training and I was watching her appearance and something was off. And I couldn't quite figure out what it was. And I said, what do you think it is that's off? And she said, I'm trying to be bigger than I am. I'm trying to like reach out to the audience and, and, and get people's attention. And I said, what if you just relax and you are just yourself? And the next national TV show appearance she was on, the whole crew and audience and host stood up and gave her a standing ovation. And I said, what do you think you did differently? And she said, I was myself, nothing more, nothing less, and that was enough. And I think this is one of the biggest challenges that people have is that we wanna be seen, but we don't wanna be seen. We wanna be seen for all of our good qualities, but we don't want to be seen for the things that are like are unresolved. And Gina had mentioned that one of the things she was interested in is your presence. So your presence is really the most important thing. And some of those practices to develop your presence are internal practices that you practice over time. 
and you start to develop your internal, mm, I, I, I would say it gets into your mental and muscle memory. And then some of the practices that are more technical or more, that's like the role play, which I do with all of my clients and course participants, because we need to actually put ourselves in the exact situation that we're going to be in to understand how we're going to react and then practice. So there's some practices with how to shift in the moment. And those practices that you're doing ahead of time will help prepare you so you're not, you don't get that, <gasps> you know, feeling of, of being surprised or being shocked or, you know, when someone's too aggressive or too intimate or whatever happens in, a, in an interview, which is kind of everything. I also want to say that sometimes we think that we're not ready for PR. Like we have to do something else before we're ready. And I just want to say we, nobody ever feels ready, ever. So we all need to just start where we are because it's kind of a myth that you will ever be ready. And, you know, now is the time because PR is possible for all of you, no matter where you're starting. And really, we're looking for three things to be able to get publicity. Number one is to master your message. And that really means to master yourself. So PR is really as much personal development as it is professional development. And that message needs to connect with what the media needs and what their audience needs. And so number two is to have your system set up behind the scenes. Publicity ushers people to your door and then you need to open it and usher them through. So it brings you to your door, you open it. So you have to have those systems in place so your publicity really works. And number three is a publicity plan, which is an intentional strategic plan that matches your time and energy and personality. So you get from where you are to where you wanna go. And we really live in, in times right now where there's a really great opening. It's kind of like what Dickens said, it's the best of times and the worst of times. But there's a possibility now for all of those of you who are interested in creating a movement or changing a perception or bringing a new innovative product or service into the world right now because there are so many opportunities now that there weren't before with the internet and with YouTube and just with being able to touch millions of people and not necessarily um, in the traditional ways that we had in the past. And I think that right now um, we look at the heart set and mindset and the skills and know-how and commitment because there's an opportunity to live what Gandhi called my life is my message. And I think that's really the ultimate goal is when everything is in sync and everything is aligned, that's when whatever you're promoting really works. And that does take practice and getting that into the mental and muscle memory. And I also think that we're, we're three people at once. We are the people from our past, the person from our past, the person from our present, and the person who we want to be in the future. And I love what the poet Dorian Lux said in a poem. It's called In Any Event. And she said, what we are capable of is not yet known. And I love that phrase. You know, what we are capable of is not yet known. And when you start to shift from private to public person, you start to see what you're capable of. And media training combined with publicity is the most potent alchemy that opens you to all the possibilities that you're capable of. So the essential things that you need to know to become a go-to podcast or media guest. They're the three Ps. Number one is positioning. Number two is packaging. And number three is presenting. Positioning, packaging, and presenting. So positioning, connect your topic to what the audience needs. So the first thing that we do when I work with PR firms, and I work with a lot of PR firms, is when somebody approaches me, is if I don't know if this is something that's of value to the media, I pass it to them and say, what do you think first? Because there's no point in doing media training if it's not gonna land with the media. So we're really looking at, does this person have the potential to get press? Is, it, is the topic and their expertise is that married together and to what specific audiences need and want and how it will serve them. And 
Drew Gerber of Wasabi Publicity said, you know, the biggest blind spot when people start to do publicity is this. They, they look at publicity as an opportunity just to promote themselves, right? And that's the biggest fear of a journalist or producer that you're just going to get up there and promote yourself. And of course, that's what we want, but we want you to do it with integrity and spirit. And so we really want to look at what are, are you giving that's a value of the media, so to the media. So is it informative, educative, inspiring, and entertaining? So we look at all of those things that can you at least fit into one of those categories and then to your skills and abilities, your expertise, does that match what you're going to offer? Um, he also said that PR is not essential if you just want to grow your business. It's great and it's super helpful, but if you want to grow your brand and you want to be a brand, then that's when publicity and PR is essential. What makes that, you know, what makes you um, a possibility for PR in today's, you know, culture? One, is it is it a hot trend? Is this something that's trending right now? Um, so there's evergreen topics, topics that are, you know, that are that are great forever, dogs, kids, chocolate, you know, those kinds of topics um, are are evergreen, but. Is, it, is something a hot trend now? Like what's going on now? One of my clients has a gap year program. And sometimes when people think of gap year programs, it's just like, oh, traveling abroad. But her gap year program focuses on grooming kids emotionally, emotional intelligence, grooming kids for entrepreneurial businesses. So why is that relevant in the culture today? It's relevant because right now, um, you know, kids are not, rushing to go back to college because they want to have an in-person experience. So sometimes they want to take a little bit of time off and explore themselves and they don't necessarily know exactly what they want to do with their lives. So this is a great opportunity for them. Also, what's hot in the culture today is ment mental, um, mental, what's the word I want? It's um, our mental health because so many people are stressed and so many people um, really are struggling with, with dealing with COVID and dealing with being at home in different work situations. So that's super relevant right now. Um, easing social anxiety and also to prepare independent thinkers of our next generation for innovators, which is what our times really call for right now is we need to rethink just about everything, how we love, how we live, how we matter. That's why I said there's a big opening in a way for different kinds of PR right now. Any thoughts, questions, or ahas as we go along? So as you, as anything strikes you or anything you know comes to you as an aha, pop it into the chat. And then if you have any questions, as I said earlier, you are welcome to unmute yourself at any time and just pop in and, and ask me a question because I think people are coming in at, at any time. So number two is packaging. And what I'm talking about there is your website, your online press kit, your social media presence. All that has to prove that you are a credible guest in an interview. And I'm gonna talk more about that when we get to the pyramid. But it also includes pitching and personalization. A new statistic just came out, why podcasters reject pitches. It's the lack of personalization and that's 47% which is really big. So if your pitch is getting is getting rejected, then you're not getting on the podcast and you most likely are not going to be getting on national TV or broad, bigger broadcast either. So really working together with a PR firm um, or your own marketing department is a great way to go because they really understand what the media needs. And in most PR firms, I know with the ones that I work with, most of the writers there are former journalists. So they know how to package that in such a way to get it through and, and get ideas accepted by the media. And the last um, one is... Sorry, Susan, yes. to interrupt. Mm -hmm. Holly um, has a question and she wants to know, can you share more about what personal personalization means? Yeah, gone are the days when we can like send a blast, a blast email that's just like to everyone. So you really need to know more about like if you're if you're pitching a podcast, you really know need to know what that person's topics were, what they covered. We I've always said this as a as a as a publicist, like to know know what's been covered, know where you fit in. And it's really easy to 
take a background check, particularly for podcasts, see who's been a guest, listen to the style of the person. So when you actually pitch, you know, it's going to fit into the kinds of questions that they ask. I mean, we really even look at like, are we creating questions that this person would say? You know, and so they, we might have the standard questions, but we can tweak them, Holly, in lots of different in lots of different ways. Um, and that's what I mean by personalization. So it takes a lot more time. You know, it's a it's a slower process for sure. But I really think it gets more results. And now, like I just had an interview yesterday. People are doing these these um, pre interviews, and it was long. It was half an hour. You know, pre interview to even get on the podcast to make sure. And and I it was I was already really accepted because I was referred by someone. But we still had to have that half hour conversation, and figure out what the topic was together. But a lot of times you may not even have that chance. You're going to you're, especially for people that you don't know or bigger podcast, you're just going to, you're going to pitch it and they're going to say yay or nay based on that, based on that pitch. I answered your question. Great. Great. So presenting. So the next thing that most people do back as words is they rush to get media attention and then they have an, oh, you know what moment when um, they don't know exactly what to say. And that is what is going to make the difference between really making that appearance or that interview work for your business is crafting the kinds of things that are really the kind of business to grow your business in the direction you want. So really thinking about getting your messaging down. And it's not that you don't have enough to say, it's that you have too much. It's like taking War and Peace and moving it into haiku. And so it's really about shaping those stories and then then creating them in 10 to 30 or 45 seconds. So you're ready for any medium. And that takes quite a bit of practice. Um, the great thing about when you get your messaging down though, is that you can use it anywhere. You can start to use it on your website. I was just talking to a potential client the other day who's going to be doing rebranding. It's like, well, all of this that we're trying to figure out what she's going to say to the media can go on her website, can go in her speaking engagements, um, your casual conversations at the grocery store, wherever you are, it's a skill that you'll have for a lifetime. It's not about the clever one-liners either. I want to say that it's really about the embodiment factor. It's like, are you the message that you want to give? And do, do you have the right feel, tone, body, facial, verbal language? And is that all in sync? And it's who you are. It's about really that deep internal confidence and not about faking till you make it. Um, there's a real difference between faking till you make it and sort of stepping into that future self of practicing the kind of confidence. I think that there's, uh, it's not about faking it. It's about sort of the incremental movement. Like, um, um, what's his name with the hair? <laughs> Um, oh my God, I'm having a little brain fading. I, I can see his face. Anyway, who wrote about um, 10,000 hours to, uh, you know, 10,000 hours to, yes, who, Jennifer's saying something, but I can't remember his name. Say his name, Jennifer. Take yourself off mute. Malcolm Gladwell. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> And by the way, you know, when something like that happens to you in a media interview or speech, ask the audience for help or ask the host for help, right? Because uh, then you can just, you can move forward. Malcolm Gladwell. So he wrote about the 10,000 hours, but it's not 10,000 hours. It's 10,000 hours and you're, you're making incremental changes each time. And I think media appearances are the same. One of my clients, Marty, who's a financial VP of financial services for a $14 billion com company, when he came to me, he had um, low self-esteem, really kind of had imposter syndrome, which I know is more common with women, but some of my men clients have chatted with me about that too. And he was really terrified to be on TV, but he had a really great opportunity. And in his firm, there was a publicist that was booking all of their um, publicity nationally. And he had one chance to be on TV. The publicist had booked him on TV and he had this one chance and pretty much 
most of the time you do have the one chance because it is an audition. So we had one chance to be on TV and to be great, to be asked back, or this publicist was not going to book him anymore and his chance to do any kind of publicity for the firm or for his business would be lost. And after we worked together, he passed the producer's audition. He really held his own on TV shows and delivered his key messages. And as he developed, he actually became the spokesperson for his company. And he completely filled his roster with high net worth clients. Now we worked together for two years. So to see that kind of progression where he started to get comfortable and got booked consistently for those, those two years. And the other great thing, when I said he became a spokesperson for his company is he got so good at doing media appearances that even the national office was tapping him for the key messages. And what made him so relevant too, and, and why we could work together for so long is because you know new things keep happening in the culture today. And then we tap into whatever the hot topics were. So for example, one of them, we were talking about um, you know, automation, AI replacing, um, replacing people within the economy and how that was going to affect the whole economy in the future. So we're always looking for those relevant topics to tie into, even though we might have the core messaging down. Does that make sense to all of you? Let's pipe in now if there's anything that's um, striking you or any kind of questions that you wanna ask me at this point. I think the important thing is, I mean, just, just like he did is to start where you are. Everybody starts with, if you're not nervous, I was just telling the podcast, producer host the other day, if people are not nervous when they're doing media, I'm worried because that means that you don't know what's in store for you because it can be so challenging and to stay on message is really super challenging. I was working with someone who is um, a very famous author, a New York Times bestseller, and we had done quite a lot of media coaching and then he was on NPR and he's like, oh, Oh my God, thank God it was taped. He goes, oh my God, because I heard the raw and then and then I heard the edited version because he's like, oh my God, we practiced this and it was so hard to do it when I actually got in the situation. So that's part of the practice and the role play and the iterative process that's necessary to start to get comfortable and to be able to be fluid in any situation. So wherever you are, whether you want to be an expert, an authority, or a thought leader, it's that practicing and role play and running through all the different scenarios, as well as practicing those internal techniques like meditation, movement, breathing, intention, and tapping that sort of grow your personal presence. One thing I wanted to talk to you about is this, why is this role play so important? There was, I just read about an article called Real Versus Imagined Gender Harassment. And the experiment was they talked to women and said, what would you do in this situation in a job interview? And women said, you know, I would speak up and I would tell him that, you know, he couldn't talk to me like that and that was inappropriate. And then they put them in the actual interview and none of that happened. And they were trying to figure out why. And what happened was that they didn't anticipate the emotional response. They didn't they thought in their minds what they could do, but they hadn't actually practiced it and get it into mental and muscle memory. So it's actually getting that feeling into you and understanding what that's going to feel like when you're in that situation. Just like if you're asking for a raise or you're talking to somebody about a difficult conversation is to get that practice in so it gets in your mental and muscle memory. And then George Lowenstein found the antidote, which was, I'm like, duh, the antidote is training right? To be able to, this is stepping into your future self, to be able to react and not react, but respond in a way that makes yourself proud of who you are and what you stand for and the messages that you want to give. So let's do a quick and easy process together. I call this how to give the love look. I was working with a CEO of a large magazine conglomerate and his marketing manager was in the room too. And he had talked so beautifully about his daughter. He kind of had a favorite daughter and he was talking about how proud he was of her. And I said, before I ask you the questions, I want you to get that image and feel of the daughter because he, he loved her. So he was like, ah! He just was just like so expressive. And then we started practicing the uh, on-camera media interview because he had a lot lined up. 
And his marketing manager said, oh my God, you are so handsome. So when he got the love look, it's like, that is what we want to see from you. We want to feel connected to you that you accept and love us, and then we'll love you back. And one of the things to do, so I'm going to share with you how to do that, is to first place your hand on your heart. So what this does, um, you're not going to do this in the interview. This is a practice before, so you, you understand how to get the feeling. So we put our hands on our heart just to connect to our bodies. And if you feel like this is silly and you don't want to do it, you don't have to do anything that you don't want to do. And I ask you to be curious and open to possibility and maybe experiment and see how it feels. So we do this to connect with ourself and our bodies because lots of times we are on our heads. So this just connects us and then take a breath in and settle down. And then think about somebody that you love. It can be a baby, which is really easy, a pet, or a person, or, or an experience. If there's an experience that you love. I just saw yesterday walking um, a man and a woman with their brand new baby, and the baby was strapped to the man's chest. And he like just opened up the blanket and peeked in and gave the baby the love look like I could feel it and see it from a distance. And I was like, Oh, yeah, I know. I mean, babies smell so good. And they feel so good. It's if you if you can't think of anything, and that resonates with you or a pet, you know, the happiness of a dog, just get that feeling in your body. And then as you look into the dot, because that's where I'm looking now, because that's where we actually on a zoom call or in a satellite interview, you're always looking at the dot to soften to soften your body and then soften your eyes and give, so get that good feeling in your body. So it's a whole body feeling. And then look into the camera, that dot on your computer with your soft eyes. And that is how you give a love look when you're on any kind of, any in any kind of meeting. So, um, Gina, you were saying, what about presence? So when we give, when we give that love and we start connecting heart to heart, research shows that we sync up neurologically through our eyes through a soft gaze. So when you're looking at that dot versus the people on the screen in that soft gaze, they feel that connection. And then you can use whatever, sometimes I think about just like a direct light from my heart to someone else's heart or encircling them or whatever that is for you that feels you feel connected to your audience. But just by getting that internal feeling and looking at the camera with the love look, people get that you already accept them. And that's what we all want. We all wanna be accepted for, for who we are. And when you give it first, then you get it back because people treat you how, you're, um, how you treat yourself and then how you treat others. Seth Godin says, people do not buy good services, they buy relations, stories, and magic. And I think that is part of the magic. And a signature story is one way to create stories and relations and magic. So now I'm going to pop up and share my screen with you. For those of you who, those of you who have your PDF of a signature story ready, some of you may not have gotten it in time. I know that some people were sh um, jumping in at the last minute. So I'm gonna share my screen there. And then I'm gonna pop over to here is the link in case you don't have it. And Natalie's gonna put that in the chat. So you can just um, copy it down and, oh, thanks Natalie, she already did that. Um, so the magic pyramid and also the the signature story play sheet. So we'll do this together. Because here, here's the thing. Oops, let me try to go forward. Uh, oh wait, here we go. Yeah. Um, the first question you're going to be asked on any media interview, podcast or broadcast, is why do you do what you do? 
why did you start your business? Why did you write your book? We talked about this, Jennifer, BC Sander, like, why did you write your book <laughs> that you need to come up with a, a great answer for? Um, this is where, why did you create this product or service? So these are the things that you're going to, you will always be asked. It's pretty much the first question. So we know that you, you need to have this prepared. And this is where you connect your audience as relatable. And I like that word better than vulnerable because I think it's another way to, to describe being approachable is for you to be open and welcoming to others when you're unguarded and curious, you invite others into your swirl. And it's, it's who you are and the offer um, your business book product service or cause. So here's my one of my signature stories. And you might have even more than one, but you need at least one. So my signature story is when I was in junior high, I was really with three different groups, involved with three different groups. I was in the popular group. I was in the a jock group, the athletic group, and I was in the I was in the artsy group. So I was in all three. And one day I saw this group of people like gathered around this person and he was being beaten up and there was a huge group of people. And I rushed over and I saw that it was one of my artsy friends being beaten up. And I yanked the bully off of him and shouted to everybody, get away. What are you looking at? And I realized later that that moment was I really wanted to help the people who had no voice give a voice, people who had important things to say, and also people who were maybe not as um, readily accepted as, as others. And now those people are the same people, the outliers, the Renaissance people, the innovators, the creatives. Those are the people who are shifting society in a really big way. Those are the kind of people who I love to work with, who are the, 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 the people who are really moving the dial and creating something special for the masses. So that is my signature story. And what we want to look at in your signature story is there's really five main types. And that, that, are there more than these? Of course there are. So I wanted to just give you these five types and give you a kind of quick way to be able to create your own, which is fill in the blank. So the first one is a childhood experience that shaped who you are today. So that is something that happened to you. So mine wasn't in the childhood, but it was in junior high. Like what happened to you that was a significant experience? And it doesn't have to be a one-time thing too. It can be something that's an experience over time in your childhood. So that's number one. Number two is an aha defining or life-changing moment. Now, this is something that changed the direction of your life. It was like something that happened that was startling or um, shocking and really shifted something for you big in a way. Number three is a family legacy or ancestral tradition that influenced who you became become. So as you think back into the, the people that surrounded you when you were a child all the way through, who were those, in, we call them influencers today, um, but it can be, you know, sometimes it's a grandparent or a parent or a teacher or someone who um, made a big impact on you. And number four is a hobby that turned into a career, something that you loved. It was maybe a passion project and grew and grew and grew organically and tr turned into a business. Number five is a discovery of something missing in the marketplace. What is the gap? Like, what is the gap that you fill? I gave a workshop in Cancun to Go Abundance Women, women who were um, uh, make at least a million dollars, one made $360 million, but they were really high achieving women. And one woman was a former cop and she said she would go to a homicide scene and there would be blood everywhere. And then they would leave. And as they, as they were leaving, the uh, person who like ran the hotel or ran the business said, well, who's going to clean this mess up? And they were like, well, not the police. So she started a business crime scene cleanup. And now she has, I think it was like 47 franchises all over the United States. So that would be an example of something, a gap in the marketplace. So let's take, um, let me flip this screen. So let's, let's, let's enjoy like really two minutes, choose one 
and write in whichever one resonates with you that you can think of. It's a quick fill in the blank. Let's just do two minutes of a quick fill in the blank of your signature story and then let's share some of them either out loud or in the chat. And this is going to be your takeaway, your what I call the sloppy first copy of what you're going to leave with. All right, so I'm just seeing if there's anything over here in the chat while you do that and any questions that you might have. I'm going to um, stop sharing my screen so I can see all of you. Great. So once you once you've written your quick sloppy first copy, you are welcome to share it either verbally or in the chat. Um, I'll go if right. anybody else wants to. Yes, please, Jennifer. Um, so what we were talking about initially when it was just you and I talking, I said, well, oh, you know, the reason that I wrote this Churchill book about cocktails and champagne is because everybody talks about Churchill. <clears throat> they always mention his drinking, but nobody's just focused on that. And I thought, aha, this is me. This is not my pitch. This is just me explaining for everybody else. <laughs> so I need it. I need a way to make it sound <clears throat> better than just a cynical attempt to sell books. Because actually, it was a fascinating thing to research. <laughs> so I'm thinking, you know, my childhood and cocktails. Actually, yes. Oh, <laughs> excuse me, <clears throat> excuse me. Because in my family, there was just this huge ritual involved, which I loved watching as a child. It made a huge impact on me. My parents and their cocktails. My mother and her Gibson. My father and his Martini. At the end of the day, it was this way of winding down. And I loved everything about it. I loved the, I loved the liquor bottles. I loved mm. the uh, the glasses. I loved the big chairs that they sat in. To me, that just really it symbolized sophistication and the adult world to me. And so I've always been sort of drawn to that. And with Churchill, I, you know, everybody talks about Churchill. This this you know incredible figure who is so critical in in how world war ii ended up and he and that can be really sort of off-putting sort of godlike but in order to make him seem more human just looking at him through the ritual of of the cocktail and to me it just made him that much more human to be able to understand who he was and what he represented that's beautiful and i loved how you really described the atmosphere with your family and those those little details because they think that's so important as we're giving the visceral and mm -hmm. sensual details so it pops alive for people so whether they're listening or watching we're hearing those kind of details that really <clears throat> draw us in and now of course i'm curious to read that book and uh i'm curious about all those cocktails so thank you mm -hmm. anybody yeah thank you for that thanks for being brave sure. stepping forward but anybody else like to share theirs I'll give it a try. Oh, great. Thanks, Rachel. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Sorry for joining a bit late, um, but I'm going to jump right in. So um, when I was 18, I experienced a horrific car crash um, that completely totaled my car. And I somehow managed to walk away unscathed, some glass in my eye and trauma to my body. So I couldn't walk for some days. But um, in that moment, as I was flipping, there was this like huge profound awareness that I was meant to do something with my life, um, greater purpose. And it had always been there, but it was just this, my time is not up. This can't be happening. I can't be dying because I haven't fulfilled, um, I haven't fulfilled my purpose. Fast forward about um, 10 years later, my father passed. And um, in and of itself, that was its own traumatic incident. And it really, circled me back to that awareness that I could continue to live my life, um, sort of going through the motions, doing the things that made sense. Um, or I could wake up um, and live life differently. 
And so I made some ch choices that pivoted and changed my life. Um, and with that, developed this awareness that so many more wanted to do the same and weren't. And realizing that really, I wanted to help and support and enable other people to take, um, to take advantage of their lives, of um, their leadership and know that you can, you know, the actions and that you speak and the word, the actions that you take and the words that you speak um, can transform your life and the life of others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So that you, you had like two shifts, you know, the wake up call with the, with the um, car crash. And then like, so it's the second one with your father. And I, and I think it's no accident either that you got a shard in the eye, right? Like, right. <laughs> So it's like, okay, can this be any clearer to me to see what is in, in front of me? So that was, that's, uh, yeah. So thank you. Good. Absolutely. Those two things are like, where I've always been together, but your thing of like one time I, and the next moment happened, it was like, oh, the, yeah. The, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I was trying to, I really, when I first created this, um, I didn't have all of those fill in the blanks. And I was really, I was like, I need to make this really super easy because when I work with people one-on-one -on -one or in groups we do it organically and it comes out organically but I realize there are some like forms that can make it like super simple right and just sort of pull it together fast so um so that was my revelation in actually creating this to make it easier for people so thank you anyone else before we I've got a lot more to cover so I want to for sure cover it and I want to have time to take you through this process if you are willing at the end so um, I think we're just going to move on to the next part which is the pyramid so we're going to see we're going to take a tour through the magic pyramid so you'll see exactly how ready you are for media appearances and I'm going to go through this pretty quickly and again, if you've got any questions along the way, pop them into the chat or just unmute yourself and we will, and I'm happy to answer them. Let's go to the, so this is the, the, the pyramid. The first part is, um, so these are um, how you, um, the very top is, is strategic visibility, right? So what, does the, what this means is, um, are you showing up where your clients and customers are? A lot of people say, you know, which social media shall I use? Well, the social, you'll, you should use the social media where your people are. Um, are you seen and known in the proper places to drive the kind of business that you want? Um, blog, print, podcast, radio, TV, summit, social channels. So are you there? So for one person who was in the course is of fame, your genius gone viral. Jo Joanne Dahlketter was in the course at the time when the economy tanked and so did her speaking, which I think a lot of people who are speakers right now, this has happened. Um, and she had to cut down on her lifestyle to survive. And so that meant cooking at home versus eating out, camping versus Hawaii, taking course, tons of courses versus taking a few. And then she broke her hip. So she was feeling alone and unsupported. And then um, she tripled her speaking fees from 5,000 to 15,000 in just four months. And she said, um, this is absolutely the best investment I've ever made. You are life changing for me. And a lot of people have said that I really love the, the life changing part because I think that as I was talking to you about PR earlier, that really what happens is that PR, when you start doing PR, it can really um, open you up to a bigger life. And I really love that portion of it. Hey, Natalie, are we okay on recording? Because I was trying to move. <laughs> we wanted, we're trying to get a clean recording of this so all of you um, can have this afterwards because I just moved the people. It looks like I moved the visuals to the bottom. Does that work? Is that going to work for the um, slide? Yes, that's fine. I have a second recording just in case. Okay, good. Okay, good. So let me move this over so I can get to my, whoops, now I went over there. All right. The technology is always <laughs> challenging. Uh, is it okay over there or no? There? Do I need to move it back down? Uh, it's fine where it is. Okay, great. Okay, so number two, the second area of the, of the magic pyramid is branding. Are you known for who you are and what you do? And can you explain that quickly? Um, this is consisting messaging in both content and look and feel. When somebody comes to your website, 
does it have the look and feel of you when they need you in person? Is it the same, same kind of consistency? And that's a for media interviews, that's the constant iteration that I was talking about with the Malcolm Gladwell 10,000 hours of making those consistent iterations. So we're looking at your logo and client strips. We're looking at your raves. We're looking at your online press kit. So what should go in your online press kit? We've got your bio and your pitch and your angles and your questions and your pictures. And even um, so for Matthew Harmon, this is what an online press kit looks like inside of a, an online hub. So we have all of these things that are available and super easy for the media to, to get. And then um, this is Kimberly um, Kimberly Faith, who's also was a client and she has, she does her, her living with speaking. So of course she has a speaker's packet too. So whenever, whatever you, whatever you have to offer the media and when people, when I talked about people coming to your website and being able to move them through and publicity ushers people to your door and then you need to usher them through that door. They bring them to the door, but it's up to you to pull them through. So a speaker's kit, knowing that here is what you have to offer and it's super easy for anyone to access is super important. Do you have a manifesto? That's another thing. So the next thing is um, messaging. Um, do you know what to say, how to say it, and who to say it to on the spot to engage your audience? And this is across all mediums. So we're talking about summits, speeches, TED talks, presentations, panels, book signings, whatever your messaging. And these are your stories, statistics, facts, all woven into the conversation in a very natural and organic way. Um, for Ibrahim, he really struggled with what to say during speaking engagements and then his advertising and website didn't have a clear and compelling message and the enrollment to his university was low and it was actually about to go under. And after what happened is he was speaking to an audience and someone was so moved in the audience they and he really he had the prepared talk and then he really tuned into his audience and spoke a little off message, but it was right for the moment. And that's, we always want the freedom. We want you to pre plan, prepare and practice so you're free to be spontaneous and, and be fluid in the moment. So someone walked up to him and handed him a check for $100,000 to support him and his university and said, I believe in your vision. And then a second person came up with a second $100,000 check and said pretty much the same thing. These are the kinds of magical things that can happen. Um, Allie Brown says, Susan Harrow is the go-to media coach for any woman entrepreneur who wants a strong media presence. So what about your um, systems for success. This is the back end systems to move your potential clients and customers through. So these are trainings, teams, tech, your CRM, your opt-ins, an excerpt of the book for those of you who are authors, right? A speaker package, sales team, your funnels, your software, all of those things need to be in place. And Deborah McLaughlin, she didn't have a system to catalog her knowledge. A book, of course, is a really great way to do that because that really puts you on the map. With one of my brand new clients who's in the leadership space, she has original research from 10 years ago and other people are sort of starting to appropriate that. So the first thing that we're doing with her in PR is getting that in print because once it's in print, it's super solid. I mean, you can talk about it, but people can appropriate it more, more easily. So putting it in a book, putting it in print. She also struggled with speaking succinctly and she was underachieving. She had lower income that she knew was possible. And then after working with me, she got a book deal, a column and doubled her income in three months. The last part is your why, your purpose. Um, well, I guess it's not the last part, but it's the next part. Um, who can you help and the difference that you make? And these are, you know, your values, your mission to create good for millions or whatever it is. If you are just promoting a business book, product, service or cause, that's fine, too. Um, it's who you are, what you stand for, too. Now that's becoming more important than ever. People are really wanting to know 
what you stand for and who you are behind that business book, product, service, or cause. They've always wanted to know that, but now it's even more important than ever. And do you want to create a movement? Do you have cause marketing? Is that integrated into your business? And then the next level is, um, oh, so with um, Deborah, she got a company to sponsor 10 radio shows and paid for a publicist to promote her book and website. So that's an opportunity for you as well to have someone sponsor you. And no one ever knows that this is promotion, um, but it's a really great thing for authors. The next thing is you're mastering your mindset and, and heart set. So it's really about mastering yourself to master the media, which includes your body, um, to have your values and intentions and everything completely embodied. And what I was mentioning in the beginning is that everything you do say, are, and think is in complete alignment with your offer. So when you do make that offer, people feel that you're in complete integrity and consistency. And you're also vibrating at a, at a level of the people that you really want to work with or the people who you want that engage with whatever it is that you're selling or you're offering. Um, yeah, I wanted to talk about James, who's, um, because this is a super important thing too. He is the CEO of an international tech company and he got tripped up and triggered by one personality type that derailed him every single time in these investor meetings. And he couldn't really clearly express his why. And he wasn't clear on presenting the value of his company to investors. So we role played that worst case scenario over and over again until he found that equanimity and centeredness and calm. So when I was chatting with you earlier about the value and the, the necessity of role play of actually putting yourself in the situation, feeling the emotion, feeling the, like when I've trained people um, before to be on like Bill O'Reilly in 60 minutes, to really be prepared for that kind of back and forth aggressiveness and, and speed and even on any kind of show, what can happen is you may have prepared perfectly for it and then they change the agenda and they change the agenda on the spot or um, in the moment and you have to be able to be able to flow with that and still get your message out and maintain your equanimity. And Gina, this is part of what I was talking about in terms of your presence and what we're going to go through the together, this process is part of the way that you develop that presence and future self. Anyway, so he then got his next round funding in a three day pitch to investors. The last part is the thought to path leadership. Now, the path to thought leadership, not everyone wants to be a thought leader. But if this is something that you aspire to, then, um, you know, it is that it's it's really gaining the media trust and establishing yourself, your expert authority and thought leadership or being a, a, a regular media guest um, to be sought after in your field. And this is where you really need to have opinions. Um, and you also need to know how to pose the important questions. So it's not that you have all the answers, but you need to know how to pose the questions. And, and sometimes it's really effective if you also have uh, research to back your findings. It doesn't have to be your own. It's if you can pull it together in an original way. So for um, Nate, um, I was hired for Nate to grow his leadership presence because he was already as high as he could go in the organization. And for him, it was sort of some of the more subtle things, the nuances of his behavior and habits that he wasn't um, aware of. And and for you, Gina, I think that's like, that's part of the development of your presence, how you, and, and he was also tasked with something that was really difficult because he did these presentations to the whole company and there would be like 700 people all in different departments. And we had to be able to connect with each of them on their level. And that's something that we worked on in his presentations, as well as his interactions in other meetings and with, you know, things like firing people, because I have 10 years in HR at Pacific Bell Directory. So all of that kind of communication at that, at that higher level. So this will show you really where you are on the pyramid, like what's missing in your PR. And it's fine if something's missing, it's always, you can always develop it, but just to know specifically, hmm, 
what do I need to beef up before I can really do an effective PR campaign? And Dr. Sarah Godfrey said that I'm a course changer and that I profoundly altered the way that she approached her online presence and new book and virtual medical practice. And she is a New York, three, three New York Times bestselling books now. Um, when we started working together, she didn't have online courses and licensed products and things like that. And we really wanted to work toward her future moving out of a physical practice into a virtual practice. So that was one of the, so when I was talking about your future self and those messaging, that messaging needed to go into her book, that messaging needed to go into every kind of webinar that she did to moving toward the thing that she wanted, not where she was now. And so we're always looking to like, what's your big dream? Where do you want to go? What do you want to have PR and media training do for you to grow your personal self as well as your professional self? So anything that you um, have any kind of ahas right now that you want to share, either just pop, come off of um, mute or pop into the chat, anything that's staying with you or, or resonating right now before I move into the last part? Hi. Uh, well, I'll just say I have a whole page full of ways to my message connect with people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're so, such a great student, Jennifer. Thank you. I was like, all these great things about the small human interactions during World War II, a way to make, you know, history seem more vibrant because, you know, everybody knows what Winston Churchill did, but did you know that he knew Chanel when she was the lover of the Duke of Westminster and they would go hunting together? And years later, that relationship was to the point where Chanel thought she could end World War II by sending wow. a message to Winston Churchill. You know, there are all these little That's tiny so awesome. human interactions that help us see history differently. How's I that? love that. I love that. And by the way, Jennifer is like super experienced. She's written lots of books and and Ushers helps people write their books too, right? And uh, in your capacity. Yeah. So you've got, yeah. So, so that's really wonderful. I know it's, it's really hard to do this for ourselves, right? <laughs> like, it is so much easier yeah. to do it for people. And for I only have to do it a few years and I try to, you know, how can I make it sound fresh and not cynical? Like, oh yeah, I've been in the book publishing business for decades. and Right, <laughs> right, right. No, that's really great. I love it. Um, it's fun, fun making notes. So um, somebody T I think it's Tafuk said, great information. I look forward to the recording. He has to jump off. Okay, great. And Gina says, I'm on a lot of webinars promoting internally at large healthcare. This is very helpful. Oh, good. Thank you. Yeah, it sounded like you're on Zoom like a lot. And I think that can be really, ex <laughs> really, really exhausting. But um, yeah, so anything that we can do to make it more interactive. And if we, if we were, um, whoops. And, you know, so, um, yeah, I'm always thinking about that, too, because it's so different giving an in-person um, talk and presentation where you can touch people and you can do things visually. Um, so I'm always thinking about, like, how we can shift that and make it more interesting on Zoom. Um, so let's talk about, if you don't have any more questions or thoughts, um, let's talk about the last thing, which is, Strategies to get your message across in any media interview so you grow your business and your influence. And then we'll do the process together. I know we're right at, at 11 o'clock, so um, I was trying to keep it to an hour. I'm gonna go a little bit over, so um, I hope you can stay with me. I think we can wrap up in about 10 minutes. Oh, darn. Oh, bye, Gina. Sorry, we'll, we'll give you the recording because I think you'll, I think you'll like to go through this process. Um, it might it might be very helpful for your presence. So thanks for staying thanks for staying on and sorry you have to go. Um, so I'm going to move through this pretty quickly. Um, uh, your signature story, why you do what you do. So we did that. So you have your sloppy first copy, and and some of them are not so sloppy. I <laughs> think they're really they're really great. So you have that. And now um, the other thing that you want to have at the ready is success stories of clients and customers. And what you want in this regard is something that is either quantifiable and measurable, meaning numbers, something that we can really see here, here, feel, grasp, or transformational. So transformational is moving from one state to another. So, so being able to 
really see again see here feel though that that kind of transformation so measurable is quantifiable so for my client i'm going to pop up here again in the sheer screen so you can see Jeannie. So Jeannie really was like when she came, to, we joke and say she didn't speak English and people say, well, what language did she speak? And I said, geek or science speak or acad academia, because a lot of academics that I work with uh, or people in the more scientific fields have their own kind of language that isn't transferable and translatable when you get to media. And it really has to be so um, spoken in such a way that anyone can understand. So she had no publicity and few big contracts. And after we worked together, um, she went on from in just a few short months, she had um, media outlets in like really big places, which the New York Times, USA Today, Open Friends, Forbes, Mon I mean, it's kind of every, she kind of was everywhere. And she said, Susan taught me how to do media. And then I always like to look at, well, a lot of PR firms don't like to look at this because not PR is not always measurable, but I like to measure anything that we can. And I'm like, well, you got the PR and you've got your message out in such a way that it resonated with people. How did it grow your business? So for her, she got those lucrative consulting contracts and that with nationally recognized companies and those um, long litany of accomplishments really serve as instant credibility. She said, I couldn't purchase that with a million dollar advertising budget. So that's what publicity can give you too. It's like the credibility of having that um, viability that you have been vetted by the media at these highest levels possible and or trades. You know, it doesn't always have to be national consumer. If you're looking for credibility in your own field, it can be, you know, trade mags. It's wherever you want the credibility and wherever you want the sales. And I'm using sales in the bigger sense of the word. Um, but that's quantifiable. I mean, it's quantifiable in the media, it's quantifiable in the contracts. And if I wanted to put a number on it, you know, and say, um, you know, Jeannie likes to keep that private, but it's, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars. But anything that you can say that's, that's measurable is really super helpful. Um, and then and this is a way, by the way, this is a way that you can brag without bragging. Because I know that people, when you talk about the accomplishments of your clients through you, so you're not saying, I'm so great, I did this. It's like, this is what happened when we worked together. So it's a really nice way. And the story, of course, should relate to your point. You know, so you can't just put out the stories really, like they need to relate to a point. You need to weave them into the conversation. So for working with people, if you'd like to go deeper with me, typically it's in five ways. I work with individuals company that has a marketing department or a CMO, and then they book the media placement. So I do the media training and whoever you're working with does the media placements. A CEO, executive or entrepreneur um, hired or will hire a PR agency to book the media placements, or you're an entrepreneur spokesperson who is just being, you know, those media is already coming to you that you are being invited to participate on podcasts and panels and you want to prepare for them podcast panels some at zoom radio tv um you're a founder pitching investors proceed to series C, C, and you want to build a company brand that's innovative and remarkable um and by the way what investors are buying is you and your leadership bottom line Yes, of course, you have to have all the elements and, and the great stuff in a pitch deck, but they're really buying you. Can you lead this company? And that's what I work on is your leadership and executive presence. And then a leader who wants to develop his or her executive presence and communication skills to the next level. So if this is something that you um, would like to go deeper with, this is the URL, the PRSecrets.com forward slash time. And Natalie's going to pop that in, which she already has done. She's way ahead of me all the time. Thank you. Um, I welcome speaking to you. And if we're not a fit, I'm going to be the first person to tell you that it's not a good fit. But I think we pretty much know um, right away if you're a good fit or not. Um, so number three, did I go to number three? Oh, I also wanted to talk about advice to um for knowledge to educate enlighten and inspire which is something i touched on in the beginning um and entrance those are those are the kinds of things that we're looking for and so 
that's where we are actually in that kind of role play situation and refining that. And it's an iterative process. We prepare you for the PR and for your media. And then, and then each time you get an interview, whether it's print, podcast, whatever the medium, we prepare for those specific mediums and those specific questions angled for that, those specific publications or outlets. So it's an ongoing process of improvement, seeing what you did well and what you should shift, what you could shift for next time. Yeah, so let's do a process together, which is called the one command. And what I'm, I'm going to just have us jump into it because really with a very brief explanation, this is a process that can shift your neurology and your biology and your DNA on the spot in an ongoing way. So this is a practice that you can do every day if you choose on any topic. And it's super simple and um, it's what, you know, it's what really starts to elevate your presence and elevate you to the next level of wherever you want to go. And so I'm just going to, I think, just take you through, but one more explanation about it, which is we're actually going to go into theta, which is a brainwave which taps into your unconscious. So when we're sleeping, we're in delta and waking, we're in alpha. And this is the state that's sort of in between. And the way that we're going to do that is simply by our eyes will be closed, but we're going to turn our eyes up as if we're looking up to the top of our head. And this is like a mechanical way to just put you into theta like that. So when I tell you to put your eyes up, you're going to be looking up to the top of your head like that, but your eyes are going to be closed. So just looking up like you're looking up at the top of your head. And so we'll just do this together. So it's an eyes closed process. So if you're in your chair, we can just sit back and relax. You can do this laying down too um, in your, um, so it doesn't matter. You can probably do it standing too, but sitting, so sitting back into the chair, deep breath in and feeling your feet on the ground and another breath in and when i speak the commands you're just going to say them silently to yourself and then i'll explain after why we do them in the way that we do but just whenever i say something say it also to yourself you feel your feet on the ground and you feel you can imagine your feet as roots going deep, deep, deep down into the earth, or you can imagine beautiful jewels at the bottom of your feet. And as your feet, as that, those roots, as those gems and beautiful things go deep, deep, deep down into the earth, you have access to all of the ancestors that came before you, the magna, all of the creatures that have died, everything that is interred in the earth, the, the strength of the earth, all of the different layers of the earth, it's all available to you at this moment. And then imagine that from the sky, the heavens, there's a light that comes down through your head, through your body, through the core of your being, through your feet, and that goes all the way deep, deep down into the earth. And then begin to pull that energy and awareness up through your feet, through your calves, through your thighs, through your solar plexus. And when you get to your heart, we align in your heart with what you want. So for today, I'm going to say we want to bring into alignment all of our skills, abilities, and beingness so we can be ready to do our work in the world in a way that fully expresses ourselves and deeply connects to others and that those people will connect with us and engage us or engage with our offer and then take a deep breath in and pull that energy to your heart and then look up to your forehead and see a uh, Bring that light up to the top of your forehead and hold, 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 and then let it out and make a big sound, wishing sound. 
light before you, light behind you, light to the right of you, light to the left of you, light above you, light below you, light inside of you, light, light, light. You are the light. You can do anything that you want. Anything is possible. Keep your eyes rolled up. Begin to travel up into your, past your head, past the ceiling, up into the sky, up, up, up into the universe, up, up, up past the Milky Way, up, up, up past all of the stars, up, 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 and then you come to the black lumen, you come to this black velvety uh, surface and you pop up into the white luminosity of all that is where there's pure potential, where all of your greatness resides, where anything can happen, where it can happen in a second on any level, everything is available to you, your expanded self, all the full capacity of who you can be and beyond. I don't know how I can let go of all of my blocks, beliefs, and patterns so I can do what I came here to do in the world. I only know that I do now and I'm grateful and fulfilled. I don't know how I know exactly what to say to deeply connect to my audience so I can have an impact and so my business can grow. I only know that I do now and I'm grateful and fulfilled. I don't know how I can feel ready when I don't feel ready. I only know that I do now and I'm grateful and fulfilled. I don't know how that anything standing in my way is lifted so I can move forward in the way that I want to deeply connect with myself and others. I only know that it's so now and I'm grateful and fulfilled. I don't know how I can expand the vision of myself and the vision of my work in the world. I only know that I do now and I'm grateful and fulfilled. I don't know how anything and everything and is available to me for what I want and my work in the world. I only know that it's so now and I'm grateful and fulfilled. I don't know how I can let go of anything that doesn't serve me. I only know that I do now and I'm grateful and fulfilled. I don't know how now is the time to begin. I only know that I can get the answers and I'm open to the possibilities of everything that is available to me and even things that I haven't imagined. It is so now and I'm grateful and fulfilled. And then allow yourself to expand and see, feel, hear, sense, holographic images or anything that's coming to you as an inspiration or an insight and expand, 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 relax your eyes. And then unwind, unwind, unwind any of the DNA that isn't serving me anymore, that, that tells me that I can't do this, that now isn't the right time, that I'm not good enough, that I ha don't have the skills and abilities. Unwind, unwind, unwind. And then rewind, rewind, rewind. I have the full capacities of myself and the full uh, support of others to do everything that I want to do. Rewind, rewind, rewind. And take a breath in and when you're ready, open your eyes and return to the room. Anything that you noticed? What, what did you notice? You're on, you're on mute, Jennifer, yeah. Well, I did, I had a few more ideas to write down on my little paper. Good, 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 yeah. Just connect the audience with what what I have in a way that's important to them, not just about Churchill and drinking. Right, great. Anyone else? Anything that happened for you? All right, then. Any questions, thoughts, last parting before we wrap up together? I was going to speak, but I loved what Nora said in the chat. It was oh. very touching. Oh, let me see what she said. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Nora. That's really beautiful. Um, yeah, there are potential gifts in in you to give to, to we don't know what our full capacities are and this is one way to continue to open to the capacity that we all to each each as as far as we can go you know each of us has that pathway as far as we can go so thank you all for coming i so mm -hmm. appreciate yes i so appreciate all of you and just staying till the end and past our time so i appreciate that as well um Yes, and this is the key. So this is called the one command. And 
one thing I want to say about it is you never do the same thing twice because when we say it is so, it is done because there's really no such thing as space time continuum, right? So, um, so when you say that it is done, it is, it is so. So you can do this, but do it on something slightly different because different things are going to come up each time. So you can work on different things every single day. Um, and every, I, every, every single, you can work on this every single day in, um, uh, on, on different things. So, uh, so once you say it, it is done. So the next time say something a little bit different and you can do it like I did it stacking on a, a lot of different areas. You can do it on one area or you can do it on a whole mix of areas. So you could do it on your uh, relationship with your family and on your business and on your, um, you know, on your making more money, whatever, whatever that is for you. Um, so you can do it either way. There's no wrong way to do it. Um, I sometimes like to just kind of go with the flow and whatever is popping up just because sometimes I think I'm going to do it on one thing and something else comes up and I just keep going with it. Um, yes, you will, will have this part of the recording. So all of you who are here will get the recording. So thank you so much, everyone. I so appreciate you. And I look forward to connecting however we do in the future.